All right, guys. So we are going to use Amazon Cognito hosted UI for authentication. So if you go into the documentation, there are steps how to configure hosted UI. And once you have set it up, you have to add this configuration into your application. So basically you have to specify the domain and scope, where to log in and log out URL, etc. So let's take a look at this. So the first step is to go to Amazon console and go to Cognito user pool. You can simply go to services and Cognito and make sure you are in the region that you previously assigned and go to manage user pools. So by now it has already created the user pool through AWS Amplify. So this was the created one. So we have to add some configuration. So let's click on this and there you should see all this configuration. So one of this configuration is the domain name. So click that. So that is under app integration. Click domain name and there it says, okay, you have to specify a domain prefix. This is basically the URL or the domain that the hosted UI resides. I'll show you what that is. Now here, let's give up domain prefix. I will call it e by web and let's check the availability. If that domain is available, yeah, that domain is available. So our domain prefix is HTTPS e by dash web dot auth and the rest of it. Let's save it. So by the way, you can associate your own domain as well, but we are not going to go for that right now. Maybe we'll look into that a little later. Right now, let's save changes. So what does this really mean? So what is this domain? So you can just click learn more about domain prefix link. So that will take you to the documentation. And in the documentation, you see a link using the hosted UI pool domain. Let me scroll down a little bit. You'll see how to verify your sign in page. Right, so this is the URL format. Let me just copy this and let's use one of the text editors here. So it's basically says the format of your domain sign in URL is like this HTTPS your domain. So let's replace with our domain. So our domain is this. Let me just copy the first bit here or the second bit here and let me replace it with http oh, nope, e by dash web e by dash web and the rest which I have already copied right so that is replaced with my domain name and then login response type code now this is the OAuth authentication type. So the response type is code. So this is basically once the user signed in successfully, you will receive an code. So with that code, you can request the tokens, ID token, refresh key, etc. And then you have to add your client ID here. So where can we find the client ID? Let me show you. If you go to app clients here, you can see it has already configured an app client ID for me with our previous setup using the Amazon Amplify. So let's replace that part with client ID and then you have to fill in your redirect URI. So let's go back to our app client settings. So that is under app integration and go to app client settings. Under app client setting, you will see the configured app client here. So this is basically corresponding to the this app client so basically in our application, we have two clients. So first client is for the web and there's another client that AWS Amplify has configured. So however, this particular web client is referred here under app client settings. Can you see it's the same name here? Right? And you need to select the Cognito user pool to enable that identity provider and here are our sign in and sign out URL. So this callback URL is basically where to redirect once a user successfully logged in. So in our case, let's try with localhost, localhost and 4200. Now 4200 is basically our Angular dev server port. So that should be fine for our development testing and sign out URL also I will state the same. And then the O2 flows. So if you can remember in our hosted UI domain, we specify the response type as code. 
So we have to select the OAuth flow as authorization code grant, right? And allowed OAuth scope, we say, okay, send me email, phone, open ID, and all the profile information, and let's save the changes. Okay, so that is saved. So our callback URL or the redirect URL is this one. So let's come back here. So this is the place we need to replace the redirect URL. So like this, you can configure your hosted UI domain. Now, if you just copy this hosted UI URL or the domain name and go into your browser and paste it in and hit enter, you should see this login screen. As I previously mentioned, all these screens are provided by hosted UI. Now this is the login screen and if you click sign up, so this is the sign up screen and you can you can see the forget password screens as well. You see if you click forget password, so there's another screen. So you don't have to do anything, right? This is really good if you want to just kick start with your project really fast. So in our application, what we will do is basically when a user uh, go to your main site, let's say we have a site called www.ebuy.com. And when you go there, if the user is not authenticated, it will redirect to this sign in page, right? Not the forget password, but the sign in page. And there user will sign in and say, okay, log me in. So once they click login, Cognito will check it inside the user pool whether this user is valid. And if it's valid, it will authenticate and it will redirect back to the website. So I hope that part is clear, right? So we need to do one other thing. So if you can remember our function requirements, let me quickly go to our requirement. Login screens must support social logins as well. So let's add Facebook login or single sign on with Facebook to our hosted UI. So in order to do that, you can simply use our Cognito user pool console. If you go to federation, so under federation, you should see identity providers. Click on that. Now identity providers, you can pick any of these identity providers, Facebook, Google, SAML. So if you are like integrating your corporate active directory, this would be the case and since we are going ahead with Facebook click Facebook and there you just have to specify the app ID and app secret and the scope right so how do we get app IDs I think most of you are familiar with that if you go to uh, developers.facebook.com so this is the site go there and you must have a Facebook account for this make sure you are logged into Facebook and there you will see my app drop down and there you click add new app so the display name let's call it ebuy contact email okay whatever the email address you have and click create app id and you have to complete some security checks i ain't a robot submit it and then it will take you to the dashboard so what we need to enable here is facebook login so you click setup now it will ask me to choose the platform so it's basically web tell us about your website site URL mm, for that you can use the hosted UI domain so this is basically this one let me just copy it and save and click continue now it will say how to integrate Facebook SDK but we are not doing that we just want to configure it as external identity and click next click next all right so i think this is set up right now now you will see the under products the facebook login is enabled and you can click settings there and under settings you need to provide a valid or redirect uri for this one you have to actually give the redirect uri of the Cognito hosted UI domain. Now I will explain in a bit what is happening right now. But for now, let me go to authentication, AWS Amplify documentation. And it has asked us to enter this particular redirect URI in Facebook or any other web identities. So I copy it and go to here and paste it in. 
all right I think that's basically it just save it okay now it's saved now we need to fill in our app ID and app secret and have our authorized corpse as well let me go to our sample application and if I go to settings and basic settings here you should see the app ID let me just copy it and come back to Cognito paste it in and app secret also I will show it to you guys because I'm going to remove this application anyway need to log in first yep and just copy it go to Cognito pool paste it in and for the authorized scope add these two public profile and email public profile and email and click enable Facebook okay it says identity provider has been updated successfully now you can click attribute mappings so this is basically we are mapping the attributes that is coming from Facebook into our Cognito user pool I will I will explain it in a bit so basically what we need to map here is the email to our email attribute in the user pool and ID to our username so that should do so basically we are mapping the ID attribute from Facebook to username and we are mapping the email attribute from Facebook to email attribute in the user pool and save changes okay you need to do one other thing you have to go to app client settings and in the app client settings you need to tick Facebook as well because earlier it had only user pool so tick Facebook as well and save changes okay so now if we go back to our hosted UI and let me copy it and I'll open up a new tab and paste it in and hit enter let's see how it now looks like oh looks very nice isn't it so you have this uh, continue with Facebook or login with Facebook or you have our ordinary uh, Cognito login as well so it's very easy to link up all those social logins and apart from these things you can have your logo here and you can customize this UI as well in terms of colors styles etc so if I click continue with Facebook let's see if this really works uh, I got an error let's see why is that the redirect URL failed because the redirect URI is not whitelisted in the application or settings make sure log inside your domain as well as your directed URIs okay let's see what is the wrong there I will go back to configuration and let me go to Facebook login and settings in the problem here is somehow the URL is not right what we have given here oh I think oh, I think I made a really bad mistake you see instead of your domain prefix I have to add my domain prefix so let me quickly correct it mm, yeah I will copy this and I will go to my text wrangler or text editor and let me paste it here so my domain prefix is e by dash web so I need to change it I think you guys might have already noticed it so let's come back here and delete it and add it back and save changes now you see a little green color tick now let's try logging in with our hosted UI again I will copy in this URL and come back here and paste it in hit enter there you go I will click continue with Facebook again well now it's successful so here I have to just give my permissions continue as Manoj and then it should do the authorization part and send it back to uh, the Cognito and from the Cognito it will send it back to my redirection URL now let me explain what's happening here I will just take a new page so let's say this is our Cognito uh, let's say this is our Cognito user pool and Cognito user pool right so when a user logs in when you get a request from the user so when a user want to log into the application and if he choose Cognito user pool the authentication will happen here right the Cognito will check whether the user is available in the pool and if he is available it will send the access token and uh, ID token and the refresh token generated by the Cognito so it will send it right away 
if he is successfully authenticated against the user pool. Now suppose that he won't authenticate with Facebook. So what Cognito does is it will redirect that request to Facebook. So let's say this is Facebook. Facebook. So Cognito will what happen? It will does it. It will uh, redirect the request to uh, Facebook. And user will be authenticated against Facebook like we have seen. And after successful authentication, the Facebook will send the request or read, send the redirection back to the user pool like this. So here also it will send some tokens, right? It will send tokens or code depending upon our authorization mode. So Cognito will look at these tokens and the code and it will make sure, okay, this guy. Uh, is correctly authenticated and it will create a record inside a user pool and afterwards it will generate its own access key ID token and refresh token from the uh, Cognito and send it back to the user. Right? So whatever the identity providers that we will add, Facebook, it could be Google or it could be Active Directory. So let's say this is a corporate Active Directory or oh, Azure Active Directory, Azure AD. So whichever the so whichever the web identities that we are going to provide or corporate identities that we are going to provide. So Cognito will make sure once the users have successfully logged in through these identity providers, it will create its own access key ID token and refresh tokens. So our front end application or our back end application can rely on the same set of tokens that is generated by Cognito. So that way our application do not have to worry about different implementation about these identity providers but rely on one identity provider which is Cognito user pool. So basically our Cognito user pool acts as a mediator between these web identities and our application. And of course any users that is authenticated through these web identities will be created a record inside the user pool as well. I hope that is clear to you guys. So right now we have configured our user pool and user pool domain and next let's add it to our application.